Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 80 Summer Full Four. So today, guys, we'll be doing my Europa League round of 16 predictions for this year's Europa League. So we're going to do a preview for every single match of the round of 16. So if you're new out here concerning that like button, hit the subscribe button as well as we do our predictions, guys. So let's start with the first one, guys. That is Manchester United versus Real Betis. Probably the biggest one of the round, guys. And for me, guys, Manchester United is one of the favorites. They're one of the favorites for the Europa League, simply put. And you have to give them a ton of credit for what Eric Ten Hag's done with the team. He's made this team into world leaders. You know, the likes of Casemiro. Then you have the likes of Rashford, who's banging, scoring goals. Then you also have, like, players like Lissar Martinez, Rafael Varane, Leo Malastia, Luke Shaw. Eric Ten Hag's done a great job a job with this team. For Real Betis, on the other hand, they've they've been, you know, they've been struggling on Liga. They haven't really quite found their form. You know, they're kind of languishing around the sixth area, fifth and sixth, kind of like... You know, battling for Champions League qualification. It's a very, very, uh, it's a very rigid. It's very, very, um, very t um, topsy turvy. And the thing with Real Betis is they have a lot of good players. I look at the players that they have. Like obviously, you have Claudio Bravo, who's an excellent goalkeeper. Then you have um, Enrique, who's really, really good. And I think the big concern for Betis though is that Fakir is out. Fakir is going to pretty much be out for the remainder of the season. The ACL, which is a huge, huge loss for Real Betis because he's one of the most uh, um, one of their best big known players. You know, I know he's not really been that great for them this season, but he's still a very crucial player, needless to say. For my prediction for this one, guys, I think Manchester United should be winning this. They have the quality over, um, they have the quality, and and I think they got over the Spanish Hoodoo in the last round of being, beating Barcelona. Now, I will say this, though. The second leg being away in Spain could be difficult, and I do have some concerns with United. Um, but that being said, I still fancy United to get the job done because... Like I said, they just have far too much quality. And I feel like Real Betis will probably be more focused on the league anyway than the um, Europa League. So I think they'll be more focused on that regard. Okay, next up, it is the next game we have here. It is uh, Sporting versus Arsenal. One of the one of the best rounds up and one of the best um, fixtures in the round, in my opinion. This is a great fixture. And I think if you're a sporting fan, you're looking at this and say, yeah, this is a really interesting one. Because you have like quality players like Pedro Gonzalez. Then you obviously have the likes of, um, you know, a uh, former Arsenal player, obviously. He's on loan, obviously, from Barcelona. Then you have Hector Bellerin. Then you obviously have some other quality players in that regard. And the thing with Sporting is that they're a very high-scoring team. They're, you know, they love to score goals, and their defense is a bit leaky. As for Mikel Arteta, he's done with a great job with Arsenal. Arsenal has been been amazing this season in the Premier League. I like the players like Bukayo Saka, who's been in, in stellar form. Martinelli, who's been really good as well. You have the likes of Odegaard, who's been great. Gabriel Jesus, who could potentially be back for the second leg. Although I don't think he... I'm not sure if he will. And the thing is for Arsenal is that... It's a big, a tricky, tricky one. Because I feel... I don't know how Arsenal will take this competition. Will they take it seriously? Because if Arsenal played their B team against Sporting, I wouldn't be surprised to get eliminated. I still do feel Arsenal should be advancing. But don't be surprised if Sporting knocks Arsenal out. Because of the fact that Arsenal may be more focused on the Premier League. And we're going to see what Mikel Arteta does. So it's going to all come down to the game at um, Emirates. Because the second leg will be at Emirates. So it's a huge, sizable advantage for Arsenal. And that even if they lose the first leg, they may field a very strong 11 in the second leg. And potentially could you know, be in a position where they have to come from behind. That being said, though, I still expect Arsenal to advance. Okay. Next is Sevilla versus Farambache. This is an interesting matchup for Sevilla. Sevilla, as we all know, have a very good team. They have a very good team. I look at the players like Eric Lamella, who's been great. Then you have Bono as well. And I look at um, Jorge Sampoli in this team and that this team is a very, very interesting to say the least. They're, you know, and let's be real, guys. Their league, they're down the league. They're, they're not going to get top four this season. Right now, they're just trying to survive and ensure they don't get relegation on their CV. And right now, Sevilla, they're going to look at this Europa League as a really big opportunity for them to, you know, salvage the season because the season's been so bad for them. As for Ferenbache, they're in a very, very tight title race with Galatasaray in the Turkish League. You know, six, po six points behind as of the recording of this video. And they have some quality players like Anna Valencia comes to mind. He's their most recognizable name, of course. And you also have other players that have been very, very prolific there. And I think the thing with this, um, this Ferenbache team is that they're very underrated, guys. They really are underrated. And I think the thing about this uh, Ferenbache team is that how are they going to approach the Europa League? Is that Are they going to approach the Europa League with their all guns blazing on this one? 
Because the thing is, I think there's, I think in the Turkish league, it's going to be difficult because Galatasaray just in superb form, 50, 54 points, and it's going to be really, really difficult for them to win the league. You know, so I wouldn't be surprised they would put more focus on this one, and especially the second league being at home. I think is a very, very good advantage to have. And I worry for Sevilla in that regard because we almost saw in the round, or last round, they almost got knocked out for having a huge lead in the second leg. They almost got too comfortable, and PSV almost did the unthinkable and made it 3 3 3 on aggregate. They just fell short. So, you know what, guys? I'm going to go with an upset. I am going to go with an upset. I feel like Ferenbache for me will get, do the upset. I have a feeling that Sevilla will win the first leg, but Ferenbache will probably, I think, will win the second leg, and that'll prove to be the difference. And I have a feeling that Ferenbache will. Make it to the uh, Europa League quarterfinals because, like I said, guys, there's usually one shock, and I have first. I you and I do believe this could be the shock, guys. Shock of the round. Okay. Next up is Bayer Leverkusen versus Ferenc Varos. This is a very interesting one because we cannot write off what Ferenc Varos has done. Th this has been an incredible achievement for them to reach this stage, you know. And they weren't even expected to make it this far, you know. And I think for this Ferenc Varos team, they're just playing with like house money right now. They're they're um, playing with so um, very low expectations, and you can see how this Ferenc Varos team have been amazing. You know, they're you know they're first in their Hungarian league. You know, forty nine points. They pretty much almost wrapped up the league. They have a sixty point lead. You would imagine it's pretty much wrapped up, and now they have all the ability and focus to focus on the Europa League now and put all in, guns blazing on this one. You have some quality players like Adama Traore comes to mind. You have Ingold, and then you have Debose, who's a great goalkeeper, and. I think for this thing with Ferenc Varos is that they have a quality team. And especially the second leg being at home could be a very, very good advantage to have. As for Bayer Leverkusen, Bayer Leverkusen this season haven't been that great. They've been very topsy-turvy in the Bundesliga. They've been they've been kind of, um, you know, picking up form as of recently, though. They have been dropping points, though, in games in which they shouldn't. They're a very high-scoring team. Their defense is very leaky, though. And that's my concern with Leverkusen is that as good as they are attacking wise, defensively they're very liable. And I'm looking at players like obviously Hintepe, Folian Wirtz, Musa Diaby, Mia Bradecki, Demrabi. You know, it's a very good team, guys. It's a very stacked team. It's just my problem with Leverkusen that they just concede too many goals. So they just concede too many goals, which is my big issue with them. That being said, I expect Leverkusen to advance. However, I wouldn't be surprised if Ferenc Varos can do it because, like I said before, guys, if Leverkusen do not win the first leg, don't be surprised to see Ferenc Varos knock Leverkusen out of the second leg, especially in a crucial must-win game for them. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Leverkusen just about advance, but um, don't rule up Ferenc Varos, man. Don't rule them off. Next up, it is Roma versus Real Sociedad. This is the matchup I'm most excited for in the round. This is the matchup where I really am really excited for. And the beauty with this matchup is that this is um, a matchup that's going to be very interesting. Roma, you have Jose Mourinho. Can he manage to do another and win another European competition after winning the Conference League with Roma last season? You know, you look at players like Tammy Abraham, Di Bello, who's been firing in goals. You have Pellegrini. Then you have Zaniolo. You know, there's a lot of quality players in this Roma team, you know. And the thing with this Roma team is that my big concern with this team is that as good as they are, which, of course, they are a good team, I feel as though they're more of a home type of team. They don't really perform that well for me on the road. Oh, Zaniolo is not there anymore, by the way. Sorry, I forgot. I made a mistake there. Zaleski there. But anyways, the point is that I feel like for me with Roma is that as good as they are, um, they're not very good on the road. And that's my big concern with this Jose Mourinho team is that Roma for me is just really, really good at home. You know, as for Real Sociedad, they're coming into this game and stellar form. La Liga, they're currently right now third in La Liga very, very impressively. And they're, they, they're, they could honestly do something in the Europa League, you know. With quality players, like you have like Sorlot that's there. Then you have obviously um David Silva. Then you have um what was it called? That midfield that Barca's been linked to. I forgot his name. Just I'm trying to remember. A CDM. Who's that CDM? I forgot his name. Uh Zubamendi. Zubamendi, yeah, that's it. And I really like what um Agnalia is Ag how do you pronounce the real Sociedad coach name? He's done a great job. Let me see if I can find him. Yeah, it's Al Gusle. Emmanuel Alagusle. I don't know. I, I'm probably but butchered the name. But needless to say, they have been amazing in La Liga. They have been great in La Liga. And I just think that for me with Real Sociedad is that, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how they approach this, you know. And for my money, guys, it's a really, really difficult one to call. But I'm going to give the slight edge to Real Sociedad. And the reason why is that 
I think the second leg being at home is going to be very, very good. And I just have a feeling that Roma is going to mess things up in the first leg. Or they, they'll they probably get the job done the first leg, but they'll screw things up in the second leg. And I do think Roma will get eliminated. But who knows, man? This could be a very close one. I could see Roma definitely doing it. But right now, I'm going to give the slight edge to Sociedad. Okay, next up is Juventus versus Freiburg, guys. Juventus versus Freiburg. This is a big one. And I think for Juventus in particular, man, uh, um, you look at Allegri. He's looking at this competition and say, yeah, we could win this competition. You know, you look at the quality players they have. You know, you have the likes of Chiesa. You have the likes of Pogba, who just came back from injury and um, was very important for them to win against, what was it called, Torino, right? Then you obviously other players like, you know, Vlaovic as well. The thing with Freiburg is that they are a very well-organized team. It's just that, um, do they have the quality of players compared to Juventus, you know? I'm looking at Ritsu Doan. He's been really, really important for them. Obviously, we know how good he was for Japan in the World Cup. Um, he's currently out, though, with the injury, which is a big concern with them. They have Jae Wong Kung, then Matthias Ginter, Christian Gunter. And I really like this Freiburg team. I think they're a very um, well-organized team. It's just that I think Juventus have far too much quality. And I think that um, 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 Allegri is going to be looking at this competition and say, yeah, we can win this. I think for Freiburg, they're going to probably be more focused on the, Euro um, for, on the league, trying to get that top four position rather than they go for the um, Europa League, because I think it's too difficult for them. I don't think they have enough quality, unfortunately. So I'm going to go with Juventus to advance, guys. Juventus to advance. Okay. Next up, it is Shakhtar versus Feyenoord. This is a good one. This is a good one, guys. A good one. I think the thing with this matchup, guys, in particular, that's really fascinating here is the fact that these two teams are very high-scoring teams. Both these teams love to score a good amount of goals. And I look for Shakhtar in particular, and their penalty heroics against Rennes. It was incredible, man. And I think for the Shakhtar team in particular, I'm looking at the players that they have, and I'm thinking to myself, this is a well-organized team, man. They're a very difficult team to... Um, you, you don't want to write them off, you know? And I'm looking at players like Trubin, who's been great. Uh, then you have... Um, then, you obviously, you have Lassina Traore, you know, and Lucas Taylor. And I feel like for this Feyenoord team, man, they have some ballers, man. I like the player um, who is a Santiago Jimenez. Very, very good player um, for them. And right now... Um, Final is top of the, the Dutch league, which is incredible. Then you have Quinton Timber, Danilo. Then you have Alarize Jakambash. You know, and um, I think it's a very well-organized team. And I'm going to go with Final to advance, personally. I think the second leg being at home is going to be a huge, huge advantage. And I just feel like they're going to get the job done. Although, that being said, though, I wouldn't be surprised if Shakhtar advance. Because, like I said, Final may potentially throw the Europa League. Um, and just to focus all on the league. But um, I'm still going to go with Final though, to advance. Next up, it is the last game we have. It is Union Berlin versus Union St. Gloss. This is a very interesting one. Obviously, the two teams met, each, met against each other in the group stage. And both teams won 1-0 away, respectively. So, for Union Berlin, man, can they get revenge? Can they do this incredible story they've been doing? Because they've been amazing, guys. They've been amazing. They've been one of the best teams in the Bundesliga. One of the best Cinderella story underdog teams we have seen this season. And I really like some of the players they have. I really like... Dia, um, the center back, I said, Deco? I think it's Deco. He's been really, really good for them. Bruno has been good. Then you have Becker, the Sabachu, you know. And for Union St. Galos, man, this is a well-organized team. I really like this team they've been doing. I believe they're second right now in the, um, the what is it called, the Belgium League, which is incredible, to say the least. And I feel like this this team has just been really, really fantastic, you know. And I'm looking at players that they have, like the likes of, obviously, um, you know, Koke Machidi, Victor Boniface, you know, uh, Jose, Jose Rodriguez, you know, it's, it's some quality players in that regard. And I just feel like for me, I think Union Berlin is going to get the job done. I think Union Berlin is going to get the job done. Um, and I just feel like they have a way too good of a team. And um, I feel like they're going to do it, man. I feel like they're going to do it. Because like I said, the thing with them is that they don't concede many goals. I mean, they don't score many goals, but they hardly concede. And that's a very, very important thing, especially in our knockout games like this kind of magnitude. So um, to reiterate, these are my overall predictions I have. So let me quickly go over these predictions real quickly. So we have uh, Manchester United. I have to advance Arsenal, Fernbahce, Bayer Leverkusen, Real Sociedad, Juventus, Feyenoord, and Union Berlin. So I want to know what you guys think is comfortable. What are your predictions for the Europa League, guys? Round of 16, guys. Let me know what you guys think is comfortable. Remember, guys, if you're new out here, consider the like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Let me know what you guys think. And yeah, make sure you guys consider becoming a member of the channel as well. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.